Hi friends, in this question we have been given that x plus a is a factor of both these polynomials. Now what does that mean? That means that when we will divide both these polynomials by x plus a, the remainder will come out to be 0. So if we put x is equal to minus a in both these polynomials, we will get the answer as 0. So let's start. Let the first polynomial be fx. So we can write fx is equal to x square plus px plus q. Now since x plus a is a factor of this polynomial, if we write x is equal to minus a, if we substitute x with minus a in this polynomial, the answer will come out to be 0. So substituting x with minus a here we are writing minus a in place of x minus a in place of x the answer will be 0 since x plus a is a factor therefore x minus a is the 0 of this polynomial so writing 0 here we get a square minus a p plus q therefore a square is equal to if we bring a p and q to this side we will get a square is equal to a p minus q. This is our first equation. Now since x plus a is also the factor of the second equation, taking the second polynomial as f dash x. We have taken this polynomial as fx. So we have to take something other for this polynomial. So we are taking f dash x. We can also take gx or any term. So f dash x is equal to x square plus mx plus n. Since x plus a is a factor of this polynomial also, substituting x with minus a, we will get f dash minus a is equal to minus a square plus m multiplied by minus a plus n. Since minus a is the 0 here, the answer will be equal to 0 writing 0 here a square minus a m plus n bringing both of these terms to this side we get a square is equal to a m minus n this is the second equation in the first equation we can see that a square is equal to a p minus q and in the second equation we can see that a square is equal to a m minus n since both of these are equal to a square therefore from the equation first and second we can write as therefore from both equations first and second we can write that a p minus q is equal to a m minus n so what do we need to prove here we need to prove here that a is equal to n minus q upon m minus p so we need a in this side and all other terms in the right hand side so in this term we have a and in this term we also have a so bringing both these terms to the same side and taking all other terms to the other side we get this now taking a as common we get p minus m is equal to q minus n therefore a is equal to q minus n upon p minus m so taking minus 1 as common from both the numerator and the denominator this is what we needed to prove here hence prove 